We're on to year five in the St. Louis Cardinals franchise, hoping this is the season we can finally break through for postseason success. We won 100 games a year ago and have won back-to-back -back NL Central Division titles, but we have not had the postseason success. So what's new with the team this year? Why should this be the team that breaks through? Well, we did complete our outfield. We had Lars Nootbaar from the very beginning, added Luis Robert in year three, and now Brandon Marsh is added to the outfield, giving us some excellent offense everywhere you look in the outfield. Then, I had to decide what was going to happen at third base. We move on from Nolan Arenado, and Brendan Donovan now is going to become the everyday third baseman. I'm looking to see if he regresses, and we'll see if he handles defense there well. I think he'll at least be solid. Then, we moved on from Wilson Contreras, signing his younger brother, William Contreras who has a little more exciting offense and at this stage I think is just a better all-around player with Wilson Contreras about five years older and in regression. William Contreras comes over on a big four-year contract coming off a year where he hit 324 with 530 slugging. I've also bolstered this bullpen even further, signing Alexis Diaz to be the closer this season. I promised him that role. He will be our closer from day one this year, which means that we're actually going to be demoting Ryan Helsley to more of a setup role after he's kind of slipped the last few years. He was definitely a high-end, close to elite closer in year one, but I think he's just been an above average closer since and we had the chance to add someone coming off a, a very high level all-star caliber season, sub two ERA, 46 saves and 51 tries on Alexis Diaz. We also added Jeff Hoffman. So there are some reasonably big additions this year, plus the continued development of guys like Daryl Marino. We'll see what kind of an impact he has this year. I'm also looking at Mason Wynn. Now, as I was piecing together things for season five, I did decide to add third base as a secondary position for Mason Wynn. Usually I don't do this, but so many players just don't have third base eligibility, especially guys that I think you could reasonably expect to play third base and develop there, like a Daryl Marino. But to me, Mason Wynn, he's been in the series for a long time. There is a lack of features in franchise for like cross-training guys at new positions. It's just kind of up to you to edit the position if you want to. But I feel like with his strong arm and just great defense across the board, you can reasonably expect he could play third base. And if there were like, you know, an in-game storyline for a guy who, you know, has been in the organization for a while and wants more playing time, like adding another position makes a lot of sense. But that's not something built into franchise and MLB the show. So I think it's reasonable to give him that. And he should be able to help out Brendan Donovan there and give us somebody who can back that position up. It seems whenever I'm drafting players that third base is often, like, if you don't draft a guy who specifically plays third base, it's not a common secondary position, at least in my experience. So I've gotten through the spring training games, and here are the statistics. As Brandon Marsh and William Contreras were both two of our top performers. Two of the new faces we'll get to see today. Levon Soto played really well, hitting 405. He's someone I've continued to see if there is room for him on the active roster, but things are very competitive with this team, and I believe he's out of options. So I might have to think about a trade on guys I can't just send down easily. MJ Melendez picked him up in the Rule 5 draft, four home runs. I'll see if I find a spot for him on the active roster. And then Dylan Lesko was very good in the spring. Alexis Diaz, actually, in 15 innings. Not as sharp as you would have liked to see. Only gave up one home run, but seems they got after him pretty good. 18 hits in 15 and two-third innings. 6.3 walk per nine. 
Not really going to worry too much about these spring training numbers. It doesn't seem to have a huge impact in franchise. It's just kind of a way, I guess, to maybe see how young guys can fare against major league competition is kind of how I tend to use it. And one guy I did add to the 40-man roster just to get an idea of where he's at is Donald Galvin. So he is actually someone I drafted who plays third base. Could reasonably back that up along with first base. So we see him here in 17 games hitting 283 with a pair of home runs and a 788 OPS. That's pretty respectable for a 19-year-old player. Norris Sullivan, 22 at-bats and did a pretty good job with those. He's someone else that probably is down at AAA and is an injury away from contributing. So let's set the 26-man roster then. This is where it does get a little tricky. You know, a 64 overall relief pitcher out of options. He does have B potential. This is Adam Klofenstein. I've built this bullpen up. I don't think there's an easy way to get him any action. Could be a trade option there. Do you think anyone claims him at 64 overall? I mean, most teams have bullpens that are playing guys in the 60s. So I think he could be a priority. We'll see if anybody ends up claiming Matt Waldron. I would like to send him to AAA. If he is claimed, then maybe I can revoke that and work out a trade with the team. But I've liked having Waldron as a AAA option, kind of the next man up if somebody were to get injured. And no one did last year. I'm going to attempt to get Adam Klofenstein through waivers. I think I'll have a chance here to revoke, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure when the revocable waiver period exactly is, but I think we're in it. Donald Galvin's going to get sent down, but could be somebody called up in a pinch. So because MJ Melendez was a Rule 5 pick, he has to stay on the 26-man roster. But there is the other option of releasing him and sending him back to his original club, which isn't popping up here. We're going to work out a small trade here, sending Levon Soto to the Tigers for Gustavo Campillo, who's another infielder, contact first guy that uh, can play at double or triple A. While I just think Soto is probably going to get claimed, so we'll just look to replace his spot with someone who is younger but fills that same role. Oh, they won't even take that? Well, they will do the deal for Lazaro Montez, who can play first and the corner outfield and is a really good defender. Yeah, I'll make that move. I'm fine with that. So for everything to fit here going into opening day, I'm going to send down Reggie Crawford. He could be making his way back, but it gets us down to 26. And that keeps guys on the roster like Mason Wynn, Daryl Marino, along with MJ Melendez. So here's the full list then of transactions that we just made. There are some intriguing players at AAA. We'll see if injuries or anything pop up, so we have to use more of our bench. That really hasn't been a big part of this series. I think in the future I'd explore some different injury settings, so there's just more to manage. Because at whatever settings we've been playing on here, everybody's kind of an Iron Man. Like, imagine a whole five-man rotation. No one misses, like, more than a, a start or two. I think I had Mason Miller replace someone for a short while last season, but it didn't even lead anybody to the injured list. Putting together this lineup is pretty fun. One through nine, it is just loaded. Like, the guys who are hitting eight and nine are not the traditional, you know, bottom-of-the-order hitters that are probably going to be struggling a bit. It's, uh, it's tough to say who you want to hit that low. But of course, things are going to change throughout the season. Not too worried about that today. And they've got us opening the season now against the New York Mets, who were not very good a season ago. Got a road trip to open. We do play the Braves again. We'll have to go into that for a little bit. And then I'm curious, the season's going to close with us going interleague against the Rays. But we do get a lot of division baseball in the last couple weeks, last month. And we'll have to see if the division race is a little more interesting this year after we ran away with it a year ago. 
So in real life, obviously, we're in September. I would like to wrap up the series sometime in October or November even. I could probably stretch it if we're still having a good time. But I know we need to move quickly here in these regular seasons. So we're not going to talk draft too much. We are going to be simming pretty heavily and doing more of those, you know, play the moment style games where I'm choosing games I want to see at least parts of playing a few of the innings that stand out, and prioritizing key situations and certain storylines with the team. So on day one, this is your 26-man roster. Our one through nine, I think, is pretty well established at this point. The bench has Victor Scott, Mason Wynn, Ivan Herrera, MJ Melendez. That spot's pretty up in the air right now. For the pitching staff, you go Cease, Burns, Cortez, Lesko, and Hence with a bullpen, Featuring Jojo Romero, Mason Miller, Matthew Liberatore, Tayenier Cano, Michael Kopech, Jeff Hoffman, Ryan Helsley, with Alexis Diaz, the closer. Some interesting names on waivers as well, like mid to high 70s. You can definitely fill some spots here if you need to. Now, we're not the type of team that's really going to do anything with waivers without injuries. But there is a lot of names there, so maybe we can have Waldron and Kloffenstein kind of slip through past that waiver period. Kloffenstein passes through successfully, so does Waldron. Welcome into opening day of Season 5, everybody. This journey is going to start with the New York Mets on the road. Oh, I love these projections. So they're expecting Nolan Gorman again to be one of our best players, but William Contreras to lead us in average and war with a record of 96 and 66. Expectations should remain high as we face Michael King and the Mets. Now, normally I play the entirety of the opening day game. I'm going to play the first couple innings but I want to uh, obviously get more through in these episodes, so not playing the full nine here in this game. Geraldo Perdomo will get us underway. Now, I have not seen feedback yet on the offseason, so I don't know if there's anything there I want to respond to yet. I'm trying to adjust my kind of habits for... You know, how I go about recording, editing, and timing all that up so I can get a little more consistent as we get into the fall with football season and everything. Things kind of go off the rails, and I'm doing more to get ahead of things and set aside, you know, certain days for certain activities, which means I'm not just kind of making videos and posting them, responding to feedback, doing the next one. So I'll be maybe late responding to any feedback you may have. But after a pop-out from Perdomo, that brings up Luis Robert. Hoping for another massive season out of him. He's been, he's been pretty incredible since we acquired him from the White Sox a couple seasons ago. All right, I don't know why that fooled me so badly, but strike three on Robert. And that's going to bring up last year's team MVP, Nolan Gorman. Can we get into the Derby this year? I haven't played one the entire series. We're going to start with one hooking just left of the foul pole. A drive to right field. He connects 117 off the bat. And that is smoked. Nolan Gorman has been a man on a mission the last six games of the series. This is unbelievable. All this guy does is hit moonshots. I want 50 this year. Michael King is serving up some meatballs here on opening day, and our team has an appetite. It is a 1-0 start as we'll hand it off to Dylan Cease. Another opening day start goes to him. 442 ERA last year, but the advanced numbers were really good. K rate, walk rate, home run rate were all in a good spot, so I think his ERA should be hopefully coming down this season. And we'll face Gavin Lux to get the year underway. 
And it's a fastball at the knees. Our starting pitching was really good in the postseason last year. I think that given we have a couple of guys who are young, that's Donovan over at third. Is that a good sign? He has that silver badge there. Like, that's been something that's kind of confused me all series. You'll see those badges on certain players, but I don't think it's indicated anywhere else like the quality of defender they are outside of just like their fielding rating being good or whatever. But I guess I've kind of been paying attention to it, not fully understanding. In the air, center field for Roberts. Two down. And there's Steve Morgan. I feel like I recognize that name from a draft class. Yeah, he's kind of hunched over in the stance here. You can kind of spot, you know, drafted players usually based on, you know, why does that guy look like he hits in 1949? Got some old school batting stance. That's Steve Morgan. 1-1 one, one and late. Three up and three down. Waving wildly. Jordan Walker had a really good season a year ago. 277 with 24 home runs. He's one of those players I still expect to put up near all-star caliber numbers. Ooh, I'm looking like Steve Morgan with that swing. On the ground and foul. Past a familiar face. Punched in the air, right center field. Not good enough. And here is the Cards debut of Brandon Marsh. His number is very similar to Jordan Walker. If we're adding a comparable hitter to Walker, then I think we're going to be pretty happy with that. But Brandon Marsh helps complete an outfield that has kind of had one spot in flux the entire series. Brendan Donovan has always done a pretty good job manning one of those spots, but he's just not going to be a plus defender out there. He can, you know, be the band-aid. Marsh strikes out, and that felt timed up. That's something we have to kind of accept. Marsh does strike out a bit more than a lot of the other hitters in the lineup. Donovan on the first pitch, cracks to right center, and it's cut off. Season starts on a single. And here is the new catcher, William Contreras. Batting stance is honestly very similar to his brother's. Even down to the little leg kick there, so I don't expect to need much time to adapt. Just a little bit off on that one. We've had a few players in this team that have been regressing for the last couple years, and I think it was smart to go into this year with uh, a different plan for those spots. Contreras flies out to left center field in his first opportunity. So what I wanted to minimize this year was the unknown of regression going all the way into October. Another full season. If guys don't play well, then you know their ratings can really sink. We do have veterans at third and catcher, but hopefully regression isn't as harsh. The regression concerns to me could have to do with the bullpen, but there's so many players there that I feel will be in very good shape. And then for like regular position players, the roster has gotten younger. Donovan's probably going to regress, but he has a style of play that helps fight against regression better than uh, most. Strike three for Dylan Cease against Francisco Alvarez. And Jorge Soler, who was on our opening day roster a year ago, muscles it out to right center for Lars Newtbar. He was our DH for a little while. We had one hot streak and then sent him in a trade, I believe, to the Orioles. And that made way for getting Daryl Marino his first big league opportunity. Down below, we have the NL playoff predictions, and we are predicted to be the number one team this year. Now, every season, it seems someone breaks out with 100-plus wins, so I don't know how realistic that would be. 
did the uh, Dodgers get worse? You know, that much worse to not finish with over 100 wins? We'll have to see. Dylan Cease got him inside there, but Acuna pops it foul. And got him on the curve. And here is Daryl Marino making his first career opening day start. And one of the big questions on the team this year is between now and the postseason, what development do we get out of Marino and Mason Wynn, two very high ceiling players that could become everyday mainstays this year, but likely only one will be able to do it. There's only so many spots. He doesn't exactly have great command of his slurve today. Got him on the outside. Here's a familiar face in Arelvis Martinez, who will now be the everyday third baseman for the Mets. I just felt like with our win now mentality and everything we're trying to do, that just hoping he figures it out was not an acceptable solution. I think that it just didn't work fast enough for our timetable, so it was time to move on. Interested if he actually develops now with the Mets. He'll be playing every day, and he is going to be gone on three pitches. Home run for Gerber, and the Mets get on the board. I know he was a high pick of theirs. I forget exactly when, but it's three consecutive... Extra base hits for the Mets suddenly after doing nothing in the first few innings. Dylan Cease kind of getting rocked right now. It's a four-run inning. And we're just seeing strikeouts galore. Cease is going to exit with 10. We're down three, so I'm going to get Liberator in there. It's trailing low leverage opportunity. Meanwhile, Michael King has eight strikeouts. He's actually lasted a lot longer in this game than I expected. And they're going to go with Johan Ramirez now as we move on all the way to the eighth inning. We'll see if we can get a comeback going here with 6% chance of victory on opening day. I can't think of a better name than these play the moment games but these are gonna become a staple of my baseball content moving forward. It's been really nice to have a chance to go through some games quicker and focus on more key situations. I've really enjoyed it. Three and two now on Contreras as we try to get an eighth inning base runner. And we will with a walk. Not a bad time to think about getting a pinch runner out there and using up some of the bench. We have two guys that can play a little catcher. So Victor Scott's going to try to get us our second run. Not a bad time for his first stolen base opportunity. Marino swings and misses. Scott swipes second. There's nothing more automatic than having him steal second base. Almost got away from him. Got the pitch I wanted and sent it a mile foul. So I got him to throw over. I should be able to get an extra step now because if he picks off again and it doesn't work, we're going to go to third. Outside, stealing third. I really shouldn't do it down three. But, you know, it's opening day. I haven't really stolen third base with Victor Scott. I kind of want a better idea of how risky it is. I guess when you get the extra lead against a, a slider away like that, it's probably going to work pretty well. And that's dumped in right field. RBI for Marino, hustling his way on to second base, and he is in. So a rally is started now for the cards. Base hit left field, going to hold them at third. And that brings up Luis Roberts. Man, in the last MLB The Show game, though, they always had that sliding scale showing you odds of victory. I wish that was still here. I love that. Up top from Ramirez, who's desperate to uh, pick up the first outs of the inning. 15 pitches in. Ooh, another one that is like two feet outside. Confidence is extremely low for him. 
A drive to center! Luis Robert and the Cards take the lead on opening day! What's that about 6% again? 5-4 Cards. And there are no outs in the eighth inning. It's the pitch you hope you get. And when a guy isn't confident, he's struggling with his command, you know you're probably going to get one of those if you're patient enough. Oh, now 76% chance of winning. Don't hit our best hitter. Three and two on Nolan Gorman. Got him on a changeup. We'll jump ahead to Brandon Marsh's next at bat. Still looking for his first cards hit. Runner at first. And we're going to get someone ready for the eighth inning now. So I want to get Helsley acquainted with this setup roll. Marsh! Oh, it's in the left field. His first cards hit is going to be a double here in the eighth. And that's going to lead to an intentional walk of Donovan. And they're going to load him for Victor Scott. And we are going to probably make another move here. Give me Mason Wynn. I like to see him become a more regular part of our operation here. He developed a lot last year. And it's very rare these late breakout guys end up panning out. This feels like one that has a possibility of working after last year. Bases loaded. Outside. Under the fastball and missed it. Great pitch to hit. Martinez will glove it. And now we see if the bullpen can protect. That was a postseason storyline with blowing games two and five and a lot larger leads than one run. Ryan Helsley is going to enter. There is still a, a pretty good likelihood that he could get chances to save games. But Diaz is going to be the primary closer. I look at it, though, like we have multiple options. But we'll see if Helsley does, you know, continue a decline this year. Jorge Soler is the first batter he faces. A threat to tie it as it's going to find its way into center field. He missed on the slider. Luis Angel Acuna. Fastball was supposed to be targeted low. Ends up at the top. And that one missed inside. It bounces through into center. So two hits on pitches that did not go where I wanted them to. And that brings up Tyler Gentry, the righty. I don't even recognize most of the players on this Mets team. He has not been hitting his spots. To me, that says you need to live with the fastball right now and try to overpower these guys. Nice pitch at 103. Now, if I tell you to pitch it out of the zone, can you do that for me? The target is under the knees. Got him! Good location. Gavin Cross. Mets need a hit. There's only one down. And this is what you worry about now falling behind. We'll try to go up top and get a swinging strike. But now we got a 3-1 count. And it's in there at 100. To me, the fastball is still the out pitch. Up and in. Got him! Strike three. And that's going to bring up a familiar face and a Relvis Martinez. 102 and down the middle. Got him with a 12-6 for strike two. I'm not asking you to throw a strike here. One and two. Takes it. I got a pitch to work with here. I'm going to try to keep that slider well outside. And that's further outside than I would have preferred. Got him! 101. 
A rocky ride, but Helsley gets us through the eighth. Any insurance here in the ninth? Marino pops back what should have been his first homer of the year. Man, we still have nine top 100 prospects. We got a good thing going on right now. We'll see if there's a need to trade any of those prospects, but we have a pretty loaded roster right now that I feel really good about. Marino is going to pop out to Alvarez. Robert with another hit. Put us on top back in the eighth inning. And they've just extended things for Nolan Gorman. He's not stealing. You're going to have to pitch to Nolan. They're always pitching him carefully. Three and two. And a bouncer up the middle. And Robert, yeah, just stay at second. Oh, throw it away. And Lars Newtbar, who did miss a chunk of time last year, a pretty sizable part of his season, played extremely well when he was healthy. In the center, Robert gonna come home. Never too late for a two-out rally with this club. Walker left center, add on. It might not even be a save situation. Newt Bar rounds third. He will score. And it's eight to four Cardinals. I've been feeling really good at the plate the last handful of episodes. And I just need to figure out how to get our bullpen on track so we can win those postseason games this year. Marsh is going to ground it. The rally appears ended, but we did what we needed to. I'm going to have Diaz pitch anyway. He was getting warm, and he's going to come out for his first Cardinals appearance. I faced Alexis Diaz. He's an extremely tough guy to face. Fastball slider. The fastball is not going to be, like, overwhelming. Mid-90s. The slider is really good. 95 and in there to Gavin Lux. Hard hit at Perdomo. Got him. Newt Barr takes care of out number two. And that leaves Steve Morgan who's falling behind. Morgan is getting his bat on every one of these sliders. And he draws a walk. Ten pitch at bat. Might leave Diaz maybe unavailable for the next game. That's one thing though with this bullpen is I don't think I have to really shy away from when I would use Diaz because you've also got Cano and Jojo. You got great arms for days. It's an opening day victory for our St. Louis Cardinals, and we do it with a big offensive comeback. They had us at a 6% chance of winning. My issue with those percentages is I don't think they're really weighted by team, and it's just more like, you know, all results compiled to say, you know, blanket 6% odds. Well, I don't know that we are as likely as another team to pull off that comeback. We decimated that pretty quickly. Great day for the offense. We got it going there late. Seven runs in the final two innings, helping keep Dylan Cease from taking a loss in his season debut. Excellent first game for our cards, but we've got a lot more to go through. I do want to get to the Braves series, at least for a little bit, see what they're up to. They got Adley Rutschman now. So, game two, and it's another win for our Redbirds. Six to three. Robert with a double and a home run in this game as Walker and Donovan also go yard. Corbin Burns, a seven-inning outing, and Diaz gets his first save. It's a four-game set in New York. We're leading late for two bullpen trying to protect, and they're not able to do it. And the lead was given up by Yenier Cano and then Mason Miller in the eighth. But three out of four in your first series on the road is always going to be a solid result. Let's go. Seven and a third 
as he has his first start defending his rookie of the year of a year ago and his 20 win season. So I expect again, the Braves could be one of those teams at the very end with us in the National League and we take them on for the first time. Four to three late innings. Let's jump in. This was our story of the postseason. Acuna at second, Ozzy Albies facing Ryan Helsley in a one-run game. Wow, 9 for 17. How can you possibly be that good against the reliever who you see one at bat at a time? It's not like facing a guy three times in one day and you learn something, you know, from one at bat to the next. That's a guy you face like once a month. We popped him out, though, so all is good there. Matt Olson. All I can think about is him hitting it between uh, second and short over and over again. Helsley, very pinpoint here in this outing thus far. Olsen, three for three on the day until he runs into Ryan Helsley. It's a strikeout. And that'll bring up Austin Riley. I'm guessing that Rutschman hits a little bit higher in the order. So wouldn't see him here in this inning unless things got sideways. Keep it down here. Helsley doesn't, but Donovan stops and fires to first. We've got MJ Melendez getting in at bat, so he will actually get some regular season playing time with us. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Oh, they picked up Maton, so we basically swapped Hoffman and Maton. Ah, waved at a bad one there. Melendez strikes out. Here's what I want to do. Bunt this right at the pitcher. No. He's a lefty, so depending on how he picks it up, it would be a longer, you know, tougher throw to first base. But missed my chance. Got him. Strike three. And we're going bottom nine with a one-run lead, and that man's going to be leading off. It's Adley Rutschman, their big postseason or big offseason addition. They're paying him nearly $40 million a season. I wanted to bring in Rutschman, but I would not match that offer. He is the best catcher in the game, though. Alexis Diaz, our big pickup against theirs. Out in front. Puts it lightly. Two strikes. And a full count now from Alexis Diaz. On the ground, Perdomo can't stop it. Weak grounder gets through. And that's going to bring up Christopher Morell. On deck now, Orlando Arcia, who was excellent in the AL NLDS. I always get that mixed up. I want to say it's always the ALDS. Diaz ahead. One and two. Got him on the slider. And now R.C. already two hits on the day and like 17 in that playoff series. We'll take a ground ball. Count one and two. Sliders the out pitch. Popped him up. And Contreras against his former team will make the catch. Michael Harris the second. And Diaz trying to nail down a win. Grounded, Diaz will make the play. And the Cardinals hold on to this lead in Atlanta, winning it 4-3. We had some tricky situations there. Had to face some great hitters, but this time we hold. And a good outing as well for Tink Hence, making his season debut. We're hoping this season's a bounce back for him. He earns player of the game. So, Everybody's had a chance to pitch now, and it's a 4-1 start. Dylan Cease gets game two against the Braves, and it's 7-3 going into the late stages. They do mount a bit of a comeback, but we still hold. 
And in the series finale, the Cardinals complete a three-game sweep. Brandon Marsh goes yard. Corbin Burns goes eight innings. Alexis Diaz does give up runs on back-to-back -back days, but does nail down the save, and we're 6-1. and one. That'll take us into our home opener against the Boston Red Sox, who are 0-6. Nestor Cortez has been really effective in this series, more than I expected. Goes deep into games, seems to be a very consistent pitcher, and very reliable. Marcelo Meyer hits here in the third with two aboard in this scoreless game. Cortez, I want to say, is our oldest starting pitcher now. I'll have to verify that quick. We have three veterans and two young guys. So Cease is 32. Maybe he is the oldest. Fern's 33. Cortez, 33. So we could, you know, see regression here as well. Cortez at 83 overall, if it hits him, that would be a little bit more noticeable if he dips into the 70s at all. But if he plays well, shouldn't be much of a concern. Second outing of the year, 2-0. You got Rafael Devers on deck and Cortez walking Meyer on four. And it's Rafael Devers with them juiced. And Walker going to get the out at second and complete the double play. I'm also giving Mason Wynn the opportunity to start in this game. I want to make sure he and Marino are both getting chances to play. That means Gorman gets a little bit of rest being the DH on days where Wynn is in the lineup. And strikes out to Garrett Whitlock. Tough sinker. How about Nolan Gorman hitting back at home again? Two homers on the year, three RBIs. They always throw that changeup. And the changeup again. Nice pitch. Home run for Lars Newtbar. I believe that's his first on the season. We're going to pick it up with Wynn here in the fifth after a Contreras double. Whitlock pitching down pretty well. I've only had a few at-bats against him, but I can tell it's a pretty good day. Not really missing with anything I want to drive until maybe that. That looked kind of freaky, but it was a slurve that landed too early anyway. So these really inaccurate pitches often just look strange coming in. Sometimes I swing anyway. And got him. He's mixing in those sinkers and change-ups quite well. Lately, I've just been trying to take advantage of mistakes. Haven't seen Whitlock make a big one yet. Three and one to Perdomo. Maybe now he gives us something to hit. And I missed it. Full count. Perdomo taps it to second base for out number two. And there is Luis Robert Jr. Three RBIs came in opening day. He's only had one since. Due for another one, I'd say. And just missed. I chased that one enough. Not this time, Garrett. And Robert works out a walk. At the corners now, and you've got Nolan Gorman. I know I got to change uh, Marino's number. Another Yadier Molina jersey there reminds me. I'll do it after this game, maybe. Pending forgetting. Always possible. Gorman right past Whitlock and into center. And it's 2 nothing cards. Newt Bar is next. He's going to cash in. Into center, a third run scores. It's like a pressure cooker, man. This offense... You think you've got them where you want them, and then one after another, we blow the whole game open. And that's going to give a 3-0 lead to Nestor Cortez. 
And he's in there to Meyer. The only lefty in our starting rotation. Always like to have at least one. Oh, and two on Meyer. And got him on three. Devers, deep drive to center. Robert on the track, makes the catch. He just missed. I'm curious, the wind? Is there no wind? There is no wind indicator right now. So I don't know if it was blowing in. I thought it might've been. Trying to get Casas. It's a three, two count. Cortez gets him to expand his zone for strike three. Yeah, give me Brandon Marsh. One homer, eight RBIs. Might be our leader already. Hitting sixth. And that's going to go out to center, trying to track it down. I just missed that one. Early on now, Brendan Donovan hitting 231 on the season. If he's still drawing walks and has a good on base, though, I'm not too worried about it. Plus, our third base options are pretty limited. That's going to go into left field, bouncing past Devers, so we help out that average. And William Contreras now. That was so close to a homer. Right center works for me. Donovan will hit the gas. What do you got left in the tank, Donovan? Rounding third, he will score on an RBI double. Mason win. One gone, three one. All right, we'll take a walk then. Base hit left field. Perdomo will load the bases in the sixth. And there's only one out. It's Luis Robert Jr. Hammered foul. And chased it. The bases will stay loaded for Nolan Gorman. Up and in, and I think a little bit late. Nice pitch. In the air, and under it, Jacob Junis pitching out of trouble. Home run, Brendan Donovan! Six to one cards. And Jeff Hoffman's going to enter. He was one of the relievers we added in the offseason. Fastball splitter slider. Runner at second facing Colt Keith. So he's got some good velocity. And it was tough facing him in the postseason a year ago. He's pitched really well. So nice to pry him away from the Braves, but struggling to get a strike here against Keith. Is it just me or do the Red Sox have a million lefties? This is their lefty facing lineup, and it's been like, I think, a lefty 2 3 4. A walk for Keith as the Sox try to get some back. And now Yoshida, who's a lefty. Like, okay, let me see how this is. Five straight lefties. And then Kyle Teal there at the end. I don't know how many of these guys hit lefties all that well. In the air for Robert in center. No problem there. In the air by Mason Wynn and sent out to right where it is caught. Just want to show you his at-bats as that's one of our early season stories. A triple for Perdomo, a sacrifice fly. How about a six-run lead? We're going to have Hoffman close it out for us. And to reach, and he does end the game. Another win for the Cards, another loss for the Red Sox, who are 0-7. Cortez goes six, very good outing for him. And this offense is looking very potent a couple weeks into the year. The next day, 
The Red Sox are mounting a comeback. Alexis Diaz is in the game. One of these runs was off of him. And we're going to jump in. One out from victory. Only six pitches in. It's Colt Keith in the rain. Red Sox looking for their first victory. Low with the slider. We go with the 2-1 count. And he checks his swing. Masataka Yoshida is on deck. Diaz, 3-1, and it's inside. Yoshida has a homer and a single. Diaz maybe not as sharp. Got a piece and falls behind. Lifted. In comes Marsh. And he's going to keep the Red Sox from winning a game. Another win for the Cards. Does Dylan Lesko earn another W? That's all this guy does. He's 2-0 on the year. Six innings, nine strikeouts. What happened here late? First of all, Mason Wynn does go yard in this game. We had an error from Marsh, and maybe that led to one of those runs. Helsley did give up two. Definitely don't love seeing our current bullpen ERAs where they're at. Helsley and Diaz have definitely been hit around a little bit so far, but too early to draw too many conclusions. But I'd love to think that Helsley can maintain a 17K per nine. Now, I'm not going to talk scouting too much, but I think third base is going to remain a target given we don't have a young standout player there. I'm also open to options at second base. And I'm going to keep starting pitcher as an option too, given three of our current starters are both up there in years. And we don't have nearly the same pitching depth as we once did. A couple of those guys are now at the majors. And I've traded away some pitching prospects to acquire the likes of Perdomo and Luis Robert. We do sweep the Red Sox, sending them to 0-9. And the St. Louis Cardinals are 9-1. I would be shocked if that isn't the best record in baseball. And it certainly is. Dodgers are 8-2, though. We do lose to the Royals. Corbin Burns, though, coming back the next day. He's going to shut them out. Looks like that's our first complete game shutout. No, Liberator got two outs. No complete game, but a good win. The offense is in excellent form right now. Geraldo Perdomo is hitting 320. Nolan Gorman's 308. Lars Newtbar, 38 at bats into the year. Less than a lot of these players, but 421. I'm curious, over in Arizona, what things look like right now for our good friend Nolan Arenado. He is currently hitting 143. No extra base hits in 35 at bats. They signed him to a one year, $6.6 .6 million contract. Whatever happened to Dylan Carlson? Oh, he's in KC. We just faced him. He signed a two-year, like, $14.6 million contract with the Royals. We head back on the road, another East Coast road trip. Gorman with two homers on the day. What does he finish with? It's a 9-2 win. Two homers, three RBIs. Lesko wins. If Lesko's pitching, we're having a good day. Looks like we're going to lose our first series of the year. 9-0. We are shut out for the first time. The Nationals have taken two out of three. We're 16 games into the year. I think that's going to be where we end our action today. We'll probably get through a much larger portion of the schedule in the next episode, but this is further than we usually get in the opening day videos. But I really enjoy doing episodes like this, and I'm excited to start a new series next year and to incorporate a lot more of these. I think it'll, it'll help me be a little more consistent because doing these critical situation or play the moment style games, like I'm not playing an hour plus long game guaranteed. My recording sessions tend to go pretty long in the show, but I feel like when I have a new series underway and we're not trying to move at this rapid pace, that I can have maybe a little bit shorter recording sessions, get episodes out a little bit quicker at times, but going through games like this, we can still see a whole lot of action. 
16 games in, 12 and 4. The Cubs are only a game behind us, going 9 and 1 over their last 10. So, do we have any games against the Cubs soon? No. We'll have to see if uh, the standings are close when they do come around. But if we check out the team rankings, number two in batting average, those pesky Miami Marlins look to be back again this year, playing good baseball. They've rebuilt themselves. And look out at the Oakland Athletics and Lane Thomas absolutely mashing. We are fourth right now in runs scored, second in the NL behind Miami. Dodgers are under us. And for home runs, it's the Marlins. Are they for real? Our home run hitting is only about average right now, tied for 12th. And our on base, number one, with Donovan, Perdomo, and Walker all over 400 right now. And Team ERA is looking average. We're 12th. And our defense is number one in fielding, so that's a good sign. Just wanted to do a little check on uh, a couple teams, though, that weren't good when this series began. You've got the Marlins. They've got Jazz Chisholm still playing really well. They did sign Nico Horner, who has been like an MVP caliber player at times in this series. Aloy Jimenez playing really well. Brett Beatty. I mean, there are a lot of guys under 80 overall, and this team mashes. So they're getting a lot out of that team. And then the Oakland A's are looking a lot better. They signed Cal Raleigh in the offseason. I traded them Lane Thomas, and I don't know what he did to be hitting eighth in this lineup, but he was good last year. He's been good since I sent him to Oakland. They even have former card Alec Burleson here. So some familiar faces. Burleson's played pretty well, especially last year. But if we use the all-star voting as a guide, we have two of the best starting pitchers right now in Lesko and Burns. I don't think the bullpen is quite on that level right now. We got Wilson Contreras with the Brewers off to an incredible start. Jordan Walker right now leading in first base voting. Brendan Donovan at third. In the outfield... No one stands out there. And for DH, I don't know why uh, we wouldn't be seeing our guy Gorman up here. Maybe he starts too often at second base. But that's going to do it for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. These style of episodes have been extremely fun. I'm excited to go through a full season in this way. And we only went through 16 games today. I imagine we'll get through more than a month in the next episode. Please leave your feedback. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And more Cards Franchise is coming your way soon. Have a great day.